kind of like, uh, what was that? What was our problem with again? <laughs> you know, and, and as opposed to if it's right in line next to the next to the box. If you have trouble positioning it, um, let me know. Again, it's not a huge deal, but you know, that's just that, just my two cents um, on that. Hello. Yes. Okay, are you recording now? Can I start? All right. Okay. Um, you know, um, I, I've jokingly said in this class, and, and except it's not a joke, that uh, whenever you, you know, you're asked a question, why do you do something programming-wise, say, maintainability. Really, that is our mantra as software developers. And if you think in a way, that's kind of why I think some people are attracted to doing software development is they don't like doing the same mundane thing over and over again. They want to do something new, you know. Why solve a problem that I solved a week ago? All right. So in a way, that's I think why that personality type goes to it. And the mantra, and I think I said this for this class, the mantra for you as a programmer or software development ought to be DRY. Do not, that's do not, not donut, do not repeat yourself. And that can be applied a bunch of different ways in terms of software development, whether you're talking about application development or database development or web development. Think of all the things that we do solely to put something in one place and one place only. What is database normalization? Any of you that have had that class. Essentially, database normalization says we want to store every piece of data only in one place. That is, do not repeat yourself and put the same data redundantly in several places. Why do we put CSS code in a separate file? Because we don't want to repeat ourselves. We want to be able to have it in one place so that we can change it and those changes are reflected throughout uh, our web application. Why do we use external JavaScript files? I don't know if, you, if any of you have studied that or not, but we use external JavaScript files for the same reason. We put our code somewhere, then it can be used throughout. Um, why do we use custom classes like we did our example on in, in your lab is? Well, because we don't want to put business logic code. So really at each level we're taking, we're taking something and we're putting it somewhere. In essence, we're making a component for it, if you will, and then we can simply use that throughout. And you know the advantages, of course, you know that something is going to change about your application. That's like a given. So if it's in one place, it's easy to change. It's easy to correct if you didn't get it perfect on the first time. All right. And if you only have to do it once and you only have to change it once, um, that means that you can spend your time working on other things that are more important or I won't say more important, but you can work on other things. Instead of making the same change to six, p uh, six places in your program, you can, you can go on and, and add some more functionality. Now, so, so that's just, you know, so far in this class, that's been what we've been doing in essence. If you think, validation controls, so we don't have to write our own validation over and over and over. You know, all these components, one of their purposes is to save us from the drudgery of having to do the same thing over and over again. And that is what dovetails into the topic of master pages. Um, those of you that had me for the web development class 216, I think at least some of you did. I'm not sure if all of you did or not. Um, we talked about wireframes. Wireframes being sort of the general structure of a page. In other words, if I were to say what my page is going to look like, this being the page, I might devote this section to a banner. And I might devote this section to a main navigation that is the same on every single page. I might devote this to a sub navigation which is different on different pages but groups of pages have that in common 
And I'll show you an example of that in a minute. And then this might be the main content area, which is different on every single page, right? Because every single page has its own distinct content. And there might even be a footer down here that has, you know, like a copyright notice or, or maybe some lesser used links. Um, I was actually showing my CA, uh, uh, intro class, uh, intro to web development class today, Cleveland State's website. And let's, let's bring that up and let's look at a few of their pages. And, and we can see um, that sort of consistency. It's still in the history, in fact. So. There's, their home page is a little different than the other page. Um, a little bit, but not completely. But let's go into one of the areas. Let's go into admissions. All right. Notice what they have. They have a very typical sort of arrangement. They have their banner. They have these three links, three or four links on all of their pages. In other words, as we move around from page to page to page, those four links stay constant. <laughs> The search button stays constant. These two sort of special links that, you're, that are off to the side stay constant. And this is a um, sub-navigation that differs a little bit when you're in a different section. For example, if I'm in, a, in admissions, I have one sub-navigation. And maybe I'll click undergraduate admissions. I ah, didn't want to do that. Let's click. Yeah. Orientation, there, that is the same uh, sub-navigation as the other pages that are in, in the admissions section. Likewise, if I go into academics, there's a certain consistency to all the navigation in the um, academic section as well. So, in other words, another way to say that is that there are some templates used in this. So, to make a 10-page website, let's say, doesn't mean you're designing 10 web pages from scratch, right? And that was that way even in the 216 class, right? You make one template and then you copy that over and over again. The problem we had in the 216 class is what if something about your template changed? What if you decided your banner, you don't just want to be text, you want to be text and an image. Or you wanted to add something to the template. Uh, you wanted to add a, a, uh, a contact us link on the bottom of the page or something like that. If you only know HTML, you have to go back then and change every one of your clones. All right. We could put our CSS in a separate file so we can make those sorts of changes in one place, but our actual template in HTML, if all you know is HTML, you're kind of constrained about what you can do. All right? ASP.NET allows you to create templates. And you can, in fact, even nest templates. And we'll talk about that um, you know, later on. But a template uh, that sort of corresponds to a wireframe is called a master page. So what you're going to do uh, is you're going to create a master page, and then you will use every, or I'm sorry, you will create every page from that master page. Or I, I don't want to say every page. You'll create several pages from that master page. And the advantage is, is it's not like in HTML where if you copy it and decide to change it later, you have to go back and change all the copies. Here, you just change the master page, and the change is reflected across. So let's go into Visual Studio and do something like that. Do a, a quick example of a master page. This helps us achieve one of our goals as a web designer. One of our goals as a web designer is to have a consistent look on the site. Make sure all your links are called the same thing. You know. Um, I will say I think there were, how do I want to put this? There used to be a lot better examples of bad websites out there. Uh, people have been doing a better job at developing websites. But 
on occasion you still see something where maybe a link is called by a slightly different name on two pages. All right? That can be very puzzling for a user because they're not sure if they've clicked on that link or not. Because I think I might have, but, you know, for example, on the Cleveland State one, uh, you know, uh, if, w if in one place it said admissions and in the other it said office of admissions, is that the same thing or is that different things? Now, they don't do that on Cleveland State site. I'm just, I'm just sort of giving a for instance. All right. So let's go here, and I'm going to go and I'm going to create a blank website. So I'll go new website. And I'll create an empty website. I will call it something like a template. Wait a minute. I already have a folder called template. I better call it something else then. I'll call it, um, oh, what do I want to do a site about today? Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think. Why am I agonizing over this? Let's say I will do my home page. I'll do a page, because I know all you guys want to know more about me. Right? I'm a fascinating individual. So I'll do a page about me. Let's say I'm making a personal web page, and we'll use master pages to do that. All right, so I'll click open. It exists. Let's go and do that, and we'll create it. And now we're ready to go. Now, let me just for laughs go and download an image of me to put on this. If we're going to do this, we might as well do it upright. All right. Tell you what, forget this. We'll use a picture of one of my cats. There we go. I already have those downloaded for my 216 class. So we'll go and we'll use a picture of my favorite cat as part of my logo. Even though it's not the best picture. Someone press their button. Yes, I didn't realize they were live. <laughs> OK. Do you want to press it again? Or, or do you have a, OK. Oh, okay. Yeah, they are. They are. Okay. So let's go here and let's go and create my master page. So I will go in here and new file. And instead of creating a web form, I'll create a master page. And you can, again, give it a name. Um, please use sort of descriptive names. Um, you know, it, it's, it's not good just to see like page one, page two, or whatever. So this will be sort of the main master page of my site, so I'll call it main. All right? And again, I'm always going to choose to put the code in a separate file. And in this, for this class, the, the examples I'm going to do will be in Visual Basic. So I'll click Add. And I will get what essentially looks like a web form with, with a couple of differences. <coughs> and
and the couple of differences are that it gives you two content placeholders. All right, there's one of them. It's probably better to use the source for this. Let me let me make the the font size bigger. It gives us two content placeholders. What are content placeholders? Those are the blanks that we're going to fill in in our template. In other words, looking at this template, let's say, let's forget about the subnav for now, but this, 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 and this very well might be the same, I'm sorry, this, this, and this very well might be the same on every page, exactly the same. In fact, that's a goal of ours. We want it to be consistent. And this content area is going to be a blank that we're going to fill in on each page. That blank that we will fill in on each specific page is that content placeholder tag. So, as you see, we get two of them. We get one in the head section and one in the body section. We can add more if we want to. If, for example, uh, on our page, our wireframe look like this. And each of these two sections were sections that were going to vary from page to page to page. We could then put a second content placeholder, all right, and put it where, where you want. Now, we can go and we can style this if we want. And we can go and we can add a CSS file to this particular, uh, this particular thing. So what I can do is I'll go in and I'll create a CSS file, new file, CSS, and I'll put, just for, you know, just for demonstration purposes, I'll put three main divs on the page, a, a banner, a navigation, and a content area, all right? So, body, let's make the background, oh, a shade of gray, so 999999. And let's make the text color a darker shade of gray, so we'll make it pound 111111. All right. We can go and do other things with the style um, as we need to. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in the master page and I'm going to go in and I'm going to put in my divs. So I'm going to put in a div and give it an ID of banner. And I'm going to give a, a div and give it an ID of nav. And then finally, I'm going to give this ID, which holds my content placeholder, the ID of content. All right. Remember, we're making changes to the master page. And on this master page, what we want to code is we want to code the stuff that's going to be constant from page to page to page. The stuff, the blanks that are going to get filled in by each individual page are these content placeholders. So let's go in and let's put a banner. And I'll put my picture.
And then I'll put an H1 that will say Mike's home page. All right. My navigation, let's say I'm going to have a couple of links. I'm going to come back to the navigation in a bit. All right, because there are tools built into ASP.NET that do that navigation for you to a large degree. So I'm not going to go in and hand code the navigation like I might. I will just put a little message, a little paragraph that says navigation goes here. All right. And then we can play around if we want to with the CSS to make sure that it looks the way, oh, the other thing we have to do, we have to go in and apply that spread, uh, that style sheet to this. So I'll say link type equals text CSS, rel equals style sheet, href equals And again, there's where it looks for now. Um, I'll do a few things styling wise. I will put the banner. With 100%. Float left. The navigation. Background white. Float left. And the content area. We'll do a lighter shade of gray. Again, um, if you are unclear about what I'm doing via CSS, uh, please take the time and, and talk to me during lab about this. I can recommend some good resources for it or we can review it. In essence, what I'm doing, my, the point of what I'm doing is I'm, I'm styling on the template. I'm doing everything that I can on the template so that it's isolated in one place. Um, we can go back and look to see what it looks like, and that's kind of what it looks like. Oops. All right. We'll have our banner, we'll have our navigation, and we'll have our content area. All right. Well, we're off to a start. We're not perfect yet, but we're, we're moving in a good direction. Now, if I want to see how this looks like in the browser, I can't at this point. I can't view a master page in the browser. I can only view a web form in the browser. So what I have to do is I have to make a web page, make a web form based on this master page. So I'll go here and I will say file, oops, new file, and I will pick that I want to make a web form. Now here is where we're different than what we've had before. Because I now have the option to select a master page. All right. And since I want a basis on that master page, I will select it. So I'll select it and I'll call it default.aspx and I'll click add. It will now ask me which master page, which is a real easy choice because I only have one as of now. And I can click OK. And I'm given 
a page to work on. Now, notice the only place I can put code, either in design view or in sor source view, is in these two content tags, these two content controls. Now, those content controls correspond to the content placeholder controls. In other words, this content control that has a content placeholder ID of head corresponds to this content placeholder with an ID of head. All right? This, this matches up with this content placeholder. And this one matches up with this one. That's the only place I can put code in my clone page is in the content tags. All right. Now, in this particular example, again, by default, it gives you a content placeholder in the header and one in the body in the master page. And when, then when you clone it, you have a content tag in the, mast, in the head rather and in the, the body. If you needed more places, more blanks to fill in on each specific page, you'd have to go and add a placeholder on the master page and then you could use it on the clone page. So, now just for laughs, I'll put in just a little bit of content here. I'll put H2, Mike Zellers, my website, I was born in the mid 20th century, and so on. All right. Now, that's only going to appear on the default page, right, because I put it in the content placeholder. Now, again, if I try to put something in here, Surprised I didn't get an error. Let's go, well, let's look at the error list. Let's go and run this. They're okay, there were errors. And the error is only con con content controls are allowed directly in a content page that contains content controls. Another way to put that is, since this is cloning the master page, the only place I can put stuff is within those content tags. So I can't put this code there. Because it doesn't know where to put it on the master page, right? The only thing it knows where to put in the master page are the content tags that correspond to the content placeholders in the master page. So now that I've removed that and I can run it, we'll see that I can view the default page, and the default page will be a mix of the stuff that's in the master page with the stuff that's coded in the content areas of the default page. And here we go. Remember, in a dynamic website, the server does its thing. Whatever it's going to do, blend two master pages together, whatever, it comes up with HTML that it's sending back to the client. So from the client's perspective, the client doesn't know that this got pieced together from several pages. The client simply gets delivered an HTML document. Now we know, because we see behind the scenes, that some of this HTML document comes from a master page and some of it comes from the specific page. And sure enough, here's, here we go. All right. Again, that, that, that is in the master page. The style's in the master page. The content area for this is in the master page. And the specific content for this is on the individual page. All right. So, I could make a second page just as easily and it's going to look exactly um, the same or, or it, rather than saying it looks exactly the same it's going to have um, 
very, uh, very consistent look as the other page. So I can go up here and say file new, file, web form. Let's call this one uh, employment. And again, I select to clone the master page. So I want to select a master page. I click that, main, and again, I get those two content areas. And in this content area, then I can fill in the stuff that's unique to this page. So this page I said was going to say, employment, I have worked at LCCC for 10 years. Worked full time at LCCC. I've actually worked longer than that at LC if you add in all the time I've worked here. So now we have an employment page that looks exactly like the default page except that one little area gets changed. All right. If I want to make a change to the master, again, I'm changing content in the master page. When I go and run this again, that change gets reflected in both of the pages. Questions about that? Yes. Started with a finished website and wanted to add a master page after you started doing it. Would it try to incorporate a master page as well as already there? If you had already a, a finished website. Yeah, like we took our lab one or two that we didn't yeah. and, and you and you wanted to incorporate that with a master page, um, what I suspect you'd run into is a lot of cut and pasting. All right, you would probably, you probably would take one of your pages, make it a template, you know, cut the code and put it in the master uh, page, uh, and then take pieces of the other pages and put them in the content areas. So, it would, would do some, it's not going to do anything automatically for you. You'd have to, you'd have to like do some cutting and pasting for that. Other question? Um, if you had forms, uh -huh. basic, yeah. and then have those, when, when you talk, you, you mean if you developed a regular, uh, um, a regular um, ASP desktop application? No, not ASP, just visual. Uh, I'm sorry, a, a visual basic desktop application. Uh -huh. Yeah, you would probably have to redo it. Uh, you, you might you might be able to you might be able to pull some of your business logic out, but I'm thinking the form part of it is going to be different because remember the ASP.NET uh, applications are the the front end is going to be um, HTML, whereas in uh, in in a, in a desktop VB application, the front end is going to be Windows controls, not HTML controls. Yeah. So yeah. So you might be able to take some of your business logic if you had like uh, uh, you know custom classes and all that. You might be able to take some of that logic and transfer it pretty straightforward. But the form itself, the UI, would probably probably be just redoing it. Yes. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, essentially, uh, one of th that's a great question. The question is, how do I select which page loads? Um, if you're looking at a page, it will load that one. All right. So if I was editing the employment page, it would look at that one. If I'm not, if I'm not looking at any page, it will. If you notice, what it brought up originally was this. which it will pull up the home page for this application, which would be the default.aspx. 
Now, here's what I usually do. I usually go in and whichever one I want to display all the time, like let's say I always want the default one to start, or I'm working on the employment page, so it doesn't matter where I am, I want the employment page to come up, I can right mouse on that and say set a start page. And that way that one will pop up all the time at the beginning. If you're not looking at a specific page, default.aspx will load. If you are looking at a specific page, then that one will, will reload. And again, that's why usually, you know, especially if you're like you're bouncing between the CSS file and the master page and maybe a, a code behind, you know, if you're bouncing between all those files or a custom class, it's, it's good just to pick a start page. All right. Um, Again, you know, I'm not going to make the CSS for this perfect. This is just for, for illustrative purposes. But let's say I have another page, another kind of page. Right now, the wireframe for this guy is pretty straightforward. I have this. Alright, and then I have a content area. So I have banner, nav, and content. Alright, let's say some of my pages, pages that focused on my photography for example, Maybe I'm going to want those pages to look like this. Have a banner, have a nav, have a row of thumbnails, and then have the main, then have some content. My point is, is I, I'm going to have a master page that's kind of going to look like the other ones, but if I have more than one gallery page, I want all of those pages to look the same, which is similar to this, but not exactly the same because it has an extra piece. This is where you can actually nest um, uh, um, master pages. In other words, you can base a second master page off of a first master page. So, I periodically screw up doing this. So we'll see if, uh, we'll see if this works or not. All right. So I'll go in here and I'll create new file and I'll pick, I want to create a new master page, let's say for my gallery pages. So all my photo pages I want to look this way, which is based on my original main master page, but it has something new in it. All right. And I will say select master page. So I'll go in here and I'll say add. All right. Which master page do I want? I want this one. All right. Now it gives me content area. And what I can do is add a content placeholder. and give an ID of thumbnails. All right. And what I'll do in my CSS is to make it obvious, I'll give a thumbnails, I'll give it a wildly different background color, background yellow with 100% height. 200 pixels. All right. So, 
I have a second master page that is built off of the first master page. All right. Now, if I go and clone that, I'll get sort of a cascading down. I'll get everything that's in the master page, everything that's in the gallery master page, and then the stuff that's specific to this. So let's go and let's make a new page, new web form, and we'll call it cat pictures. Select master page. And now I'm going to pick the gallery master. All right? Because this is what has the extra stuff for the for the gallery. I'll click okay. And now I can put stuff in that thumbnails content placeholder. So I can put in I'll just for laughs I'll put in that image again. But I could put a string of, of images in here. Make that the start page. Run this. And there we have that. Now, one thing I noticed is my style didn't, didn't work right. So let's go in here and let's view the page source. All right. Actually, that content placeholder um, did not generate a div like I thought it would. I, I thought I could put that style on there because that was going to generate a div. As it turns out, it didn't. Therefore, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my uh, master page, my gallery master page, and I'll put a div around this with an ID of thumbnails. I'll change the ID of this to thumb placeholder. I have a content placeholder within a content tag. In other words, this content tag is the blank spot on my main template. And inside my main template, I can put a, uh, uh, another content placeholder for this guy's ancestors to fill in. So this will fill in everything on the, um, this will fill up uh, everything on the um, uh, main master pages content placeholders. The pages that clone from this master page will fill in that content placeholder. So like the gallery page or the cat picture page, notice it, I can fill in that thumbnail. And I changed the ID, so I better go and change that. All right, and there we have that, which is comprised of both, or actually three things. The original master page, which is this stuff. The stuff that's in the gallery master page, which is this div. And then the specific for um, this particular page. So the cat pictures has pictures of cats. I could have another page and, and that would be filled in with, with other images. So the idea again is that you can nest this. So when would you in practice do that? Let's say we were doing this, um, let's say we were making a, a website for LC and 
we had in the business division, or well, let's, let's talk about the different divisions. Let's say we had a link for business division, a link for engineering, a link for allied health, and let's say those are the only three links that we have, all right, because I ran out of space, all right. My main master page might contain this banner, this navigation, and a big old content area that will get filled in. I can then clone this master page to have a master page for the business division where that content area is split and I have the business sub-nav over here and then the content over here. And then for engineering, I could have the engineering sub-nav over there and content. And for the he allied health, I could have the allied health sub-nav. And then on each individual page in, that got cloned from these guys, the second level master page, I'd put the content in there. All right? So again, the great thing is, is you can take it however many levels deep that you want. So if you have some, uh, something that all your pages are going to have, you put it on a top level master. If you have something that's going to have that plus some other sections, well then you create a master that's cloned from the main master. And you can go presumably as many levels as you want to. All right. Questions about this? Yes. Is this a good... Um, you, you the the question is using master pages would that help with formatting? Um, that is a that, um using master pages just in general will make your life easier. I don't know if it has any special benefits in a mobile context. What you're liable to do in a mobile context, really what your choices are, you, you, you sort of have three choices in, in, in a mobile area. Um, one would be to make a design that works everywhere. All right? Maybe through floats, a liquid design, or whatever. So that that's, might be hard to do for bigger sites, maybe possible for smaller sites. So one option is to not do anything, <laughs> all right, and just make a design that works in all those modes. All right. Your second option will be to have alternate style sheets. And then you have some scripting that does browser detection, decides which one of those style sheets to apply, or through CSS selectors or whatever goes and applies that style sheet. All right. So that's the second option. With that one, again, master pages wouldn't necessarily help you. The third solution that you would have is you would have, you could have a, you could redirect people to a mobile version of your site. For example, you'll see that a lot. If you type in Google in your browser, you'll actually be redir redirected to like m.google.com. Would master pages help with that? Um, but again, I use CSS with this as well. Um, in general, it makes for more maintainable code. Um, but I don't know if there's any extra added benefits in that particular context. I'd have to think that one through. Um, just the fact that it makes it more maintainable, you know. Because I'm thinking, if I had to make two sites, how would having master pages help? Unless you can dynamically swap out the master page based on code, which you might be able to do. I haven't particularly seen it, but 
I don't know. That would be that would be one for you. If you could do that, then then that would be good. Let me do a quick Google on that because I have no idea if you can even do that or not. Okay, Oops. first one on the list, how can I dynamically change the master page? <coughs> oh. And of course, someone asked, a perfectly reasonable, logical question, and pretty soon they're going to be screaming at each other in, in text. Apparently you can. So that might be something that, that, that you could do, is create two master pages and then have code to swap out those two master pages. Um, and apparently you can do that. I was just scanning through there. Uh, I didn't see the details, but th so with that, well, yeah, that would be one thing that it might might be able to help. All right. There's a couple other things that that really help out as far as um, making your your page more maintainable. And one of them is there's a couple of controls that you can use for navigation. Um, Remember I said navigation goes here. Let's go and let's actually put something in there now. And again, I'm going to make that change on the master page because that's where I defined it. Get rid of that code. Let's stop debugging. And I'm going to go and there are two slightly different controls. A tree view and a menu that kind of do the same thing. And I don't know how far we'll get today. We'll look at at least one of these and we might look at the other one today or if not, we'll, we'll wrap it up on Tuesday. Let's start by putting in a menu. I can drag a menu over here. All right. And we'll go over the options in a minute. Let's, let me just get the basic basics of it first. I can click menu meta edit menu items and then I can go in and I can add the different links to my page as menu items. So let's go in and let's add one and I could put as the first item my home page and I can set the navigate URL to what my home page is. So default ASPX. All right. I can then go in and put, what was the other one I did? Employment. And put the navigate URL as employment. I'm going to go and put a couple more pages on there even though we have not uh, defined those pages yet. All right. So I will go and I'll add another page and I'll say um, education. I don't have to put a navigate URL for it. I can actually put sub pages underneath that, children underneath that. So I could put you know, grade school and have that link to grade.aspx even though I haven't created it yet. I could add another one oops, for high school and have the URL for that something like high school dot ASPX 
And then finally, oops, I could put in college. And I could put the navigate URL, URL for that, college.aspx. All right. Now the nice thing is, is this going to do a lot of the basic menu processing for me. So for example, let's run this and let, let's see. All right, so I'll go and debug this. All right, notice that when I mouse over education, I get grade school, high school, and college. Now, that doesn't look exactly the way I want to, but I could fix that via CSS at some point. All right. But I can go to my home page. I can go to my employment page. Oops, I forgot to put employment ASPX, yeah. Um, or I could go to my grade school, college, whatever. All right. And it's going to be like that on every page. All right. And that functionality of the mouse over works again, and that's something I didn't have to write. It's there and it's available for me. All right. Let's go and fix that issue. Let's try to fix the, uh, so it's not transparent. This sh probably will do the trick. Let me try and see if it does. What I'm doing is, is I notice that that menu had an ID of menu, so I'm creating a style rule for it. Let's go in and try that. Obviously, I was mistaken about the HTML. Let's do a view page source. Uh, actually, doesn't use that ID. What can I do instead? I can do a couple things. First of all, I noticed that all those second level things have a class of level two. So I could go and base my style rule that way. And I can do a style rule for level two. That's the thing. You have to sort of understand how your ASP controls generate HTML. The, gener the HTML gets generated from them. All right. I took a guess and I was wrong. All right, but if you go and look at the code, it will tell you how you did it. All right, remember what your hooks are, your hooks that you can grab onto and attach styles to. Um, classes, IDs, and tags, and then you can mix and match within those. So now this should, this should do the trick. And sure enough, there it does. And again, we have a consistency of that. And that functionality works, and, and we're in business. Now, I can set some properties here of that uh, menu control. Oops. Expand that a little bit. Static display levels are how many levels it's going to display all the time. In other words, right now this shows one level on that menu, so it just shows those. If I change this to two, it'll show all those things like that. And then if there was a sub-menu underneath them, it, it would show that. 
Um, I can also change the way it is is oriented, either um, horizontally or vertically. Let's see, where is that property? So if I did not want the um, menu to be vertical, I could change it to be horizontal. All right. Now in this particular case, my style is sort of getting in the way here unless I make a bigger width. And now, since I made it wider, I can see that it went horizontal. It actually made it horizontal before, but because I made limit restricted the width of that, it kind of wrapped it down and, and didn't really show any effect. Now, of course, the good news about this is that given the fact that we're building this navigation in the master page, if we need to change the navigation to add a link, we only need to change it in the master page. So we only need to change it in one place. So we go and run this. Here's my home page. I go to my employment page. has the same links. I decide, uh-oh, I forgot my hobbies link. I can go here on the master page, add another item for hobbies, And everywhere has that then. Every page that inherits from this master page has that. And the pages that inherit from other master pages, which inherit from this page, will have it. So all children of this master page and all grandchildren and all great-grandchildren as you go down will all get that. Uh, um, we'll all get the, that change in navigation. Now compare that to what you did in CISS 216. You went and you coded a template and then you started cloning it, but once you started cloning it, that template was useless to you. If you went back and changed it, you'd have to reclone stuff or you'd have to go somehow and make the changes to all the pages. Here, a little bit of pressure's off because if you don't get that template right, there's one place to put your changes and, and you're, you're back in business. All right? We're going to look at two other uh, navigational things next time. We're going to look at a tree view, which is a lot like a menu, but it behaves a little bit differently. And then we're going to look at um, a sitemap path, uh, which is probably more commonly known as breadcrumbs, where it shows you the path of how you got to a particular page. And all those things are very good for navigation. All right? questions about this. Um, all right, we'll see you in lab.